That's right. All right. How do we often hear that communicated? Surrender all for Christ. And if you're not, a, if you're not at least willing to surrender all for Christ, you're not legit. This is so important, but what happens in modern day, I would say revivalistic slash Calvinjelical preaching is that we get up and we call people's salvation to question. And if you're speaking to believers and you're doing that with the first use and you're not backing it with the gospel, exactly, that is shameful. Right. But sadly, what happens so often in our context, like you said, is there's the first use of the law minus the gospel. Like, let me just crush you with law, you know, and, but I don't really give you hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. I just cause you to despair of yourself. And then it's just like, now you need to do better, you know, and you need to try harder Hmm. is sort of the conclusion. It's a gross application of the first use of the law. And it's masquerading as the third use of the law, supposedly to guide us in our living, but instead we're condemning everyone and we're calling everybody's salvation into question. We're telling people that, Hey, you know, you may very well not have any reason to think that you're amongst the, amongst the redeemed. Yeah, all yeah. I yeah, I just want to say go back to our critique of John Piper's sermon on holiness is a great yeah. example it is. of 100%. confusing the first and the third use. He he approaches it, the congregation using the first and he doesn't give them the gospel exactly. as the means of right. doing the third. Right. That's right. He's preaching the first use of the law but not use not then giving gospel. And he's he's preaching the law as a threat supposedly to guide our living. And it's That's just right. not there's just all kinds of category confusion going on, not just in that one message, but we would humbly suggest in a lot of preaching in our land, sadly. Mm-hmm. So good examples of this and how these passages are taught. And we've, we've expounded on these before, so I don't need to do this at length. But if you don't understand these uses of the law, you're going to butcher passages like the Good Samaritan. That's right. And like the rich young man. Because, and here's how we do this. We collapse law and gospel and we confuse the way the law is supposed to be used rightly we don't do it. So we'll, we'll go to the good Samaritan and we will acknowledge the context in a, in some sort of like cursory way, you know, that there's this guy asking what he needs to do in order to inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus says, well, what's in the law? How do you read it? He says, love God and love neighbor. And Jesus says, exactly do that. And you'll live. And then the man doubles down. Well, okay, well, who's my neighbor? Cause I want to make sure I'm doing this thing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then here's what we end up doing with the good Samaritan. We effectively just, unsettle everyone and condemn everyone for not loving neighbor well enough. We don't then give them the good news, right? And we tell them to go and try harder if they're going to legitimately be a Christian. And I'm just like, man, that that's so bad on so many levels because <laughs> the first use of the law there, which is I think Jesus's main point, mm-hmm. is that nobody has loved neighbor this way. No. Nobody's kept God's law and thereby you need to look somewhere else than your own righteousness. One. Then third use kindly, right? Secondary takeaway in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, beloved, we have been given everything in Christ. Ought we not seek by grace in the spirit to sacrificially love each other? Philippians 2. You know, I mean, there it is. Rich young man, same thing, you know, category confusion, right? This young man thinks he's kept the law. He says, I've kept the commandments. And then Jesus turns the temperature up, says, okay, if you effectively paraphrase, all right, then prove it. Sell everything you have, give it to the poor, follow me. Young man can't do it. That's right. All right. How do we often hear that communicated? Surrender all for Christ. And if you're not, a, if you're not at least willing to surrender all for Christ, you're not legit. Yep. Terrible, terrible exegesis, right? The point of all that is to the young man, first use of the law. Hey, homie, you think you've kept the law? You have not. That's right. You have not loved God and neighbor. If you, if you had kept the law, you could do this sell everything you have, give it to the poor and follow me with no difficulty whatsoever. The Mm -hmm. reason you can't do this is because you have not kept the law, Mm -hmm. nor are you able to, Mm -hmm. right? And so then gospel, we should say, look unto Christ, the one who is standing right in front of the man is his salvation, right? I mean, this is gospel. So then third use takeaway, you know, if we're going to think this through, we can then talk about how we want to live lives of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ you know, and how we don't want to, you know, store up treasures on earth or something. I mean, that's entirely legitimate to say, sure. but to tell people to go have a yard sale, you know, and, and get rid of everything they own and, and be willing to do this, that, or the other in order to be a legitimate Christian is not a right application of that passage. And just brief observation, the word willing is nowhere to be found there. No. <laughs> I mean, it's all just, Jesus says, do this. 
you know, but yet we introduce this willingness category because we collapse law and gospel and we collapse the law and its uses in order to make it work. I tell yeah. my wife that every day. I'm willing to sacrificially love you, even though I don't. I'm willing to do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, man. But well, it's just. It's crazy. These I've are got just examples. examples.